big arenas, big trendy glasses, Yeezys, t-shirts that go down to your knees, skinny jeans, life lessons instead of sermons, pastors as Christian celebrities instead of servants. Talk about how God wants to bless you but no mention of his judgment. Everyone gathers to be entertained, but there's no true fruit of real life change. A church more concerned with relevance than with God's revelation. A church more concerned with relatability than their accountability to God. This is celebrity church culture, and it needs to change. In this video, I'm going to share with you the problem with celebrity church culture and what we need to do to change it. But first, I want to give a huge shout out to our patrons on Patreon. Thank you to all our gospel partners on Patreon. Your support means that I can continue to make authentic, inspiring, and gospel-centered content. If you want to become, uh, I'm going to back up here a little bit. Here we go. Ba -ba. If you want to become a gospel partner, head on over to patreon.com slash daily underscore disciple, and you can become a gold, silver, or bronze tier gospel partner with us. Join their link in bio. Thanks so much. And back to the show. My name's Isaac and this is The Daily Disciple where I help you follow Jesus daily. Okay, another video means another story time with Isaac. <laughs> story time. Okay, so we're talking all about celebrity church culture today. So I wanted to share a story about a time that I went to not only a big church because I'm not, you know, hitting on big churches just because they're big. That's not what we're talking about. But I went to what some would call, uh, you know, a trendy, hip, relevant church. Okay, I just want to let you know that I don't, my intention in making this video is not for you to feel attacked in any way if your church has any one of these qualities. Um, what I want to really do is stir up a conversation about discernment and how we go about our, you know, living within a church, living within a community, how that looks and how we can be Christ focused. So that's my intention here. Okay, so I went to this church with my younger brother. We weren't looking for a new church necessarily, but we were just kind of checking it out. Uh, we thought it would be interesting. So we walk in and immediately we notice in this massive room, there's what he called atmospheric mist. So you have this atmospheric mist and it's very, you know, it's a cool thing. You walk in, it's kind of like a theater, some kind of concert's about to go on. All of a sudden the lights go dark, back on, the lights, strobe lights start going. You're blinded for a second, you regain your focus and all of a sudden you see the people on the stage go. All of a sudden they're doing covers of, you know, popular songs. They're just jamming out and you're just like, I just woke up. I'm not ready for this. After the opening rock set that opened it up, you have the trendy pastor that walks out, you know, skinny jeans, the cool glasses. He's got a V-neck tee. Hey everyone, welcome to Thrive Church. Yeah, you know what? That was just a little set piece that we had that we love to have fun at Thrive Church. We're all about fun. We're all about having having a good time. Later on, they had a life lesson where they talked about, you know, some different life issues and, and then they talked a little bit about scripture. But overall, the sense when I left was, that was cool, that was cool. Yeah, that, that was pretty cool. But I thought a little bit more about it and I thought of what I wanted to get out of church or, or what maybe we should be wanting to get out of church. And, and I think it's less of, and this is what I'm just kind of, you know, digging through and figuring out. I think it's less of that was cool and more of, I want to, like, I'm looking to Jesus. I'm renewed in my faith and in my sense of trust in God or my repentance towards him or my convictions, uh, to stand on my convictions in this world. But was I built up in my faith? Was I actually given the meat? And I don't really think it was there. What is the goal of church? Is it to entertain or is it to point people to Jesus towards repentance, towards faith, towards, you know, reading God's word and being built up in his word and being able to help and encourage others like this is what I'm talking about I want to bring some scripture for you today Romans 12 to do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God what is good and acceptable and perfect my concern with all this entertainment focus is because not only do we shift our focus off of Jesus in order to just purely entertain and in order to just purely focus on the numbers and bringing people in, is that we're looking, as a church, we're looking more and more like the world. That's something interesting is when you can go into a church 
and you can see it looks exactly like the, the world, the way people talk, the way people act. If that, if we're going to continue to be conformed to the world, and I see it, I see it because we're more and more pulled towards the, the you know, implementing these trends or, you know, being the most relevant church or being the most entertaining church, getting the best, you know, musical acts or just making it like a, you know, a light show. All that is making us look that much more like the world. And I'm not saying that we can't do that in appropriate, the right context kind of way in order to uh, bring glory to God in the right context but oftentimes it is the focus it is the focus of the mission of the church and the church is not here to entertain it is to make disciples we're looking more and more like the world and in the Bible it talks about being salt and light we're actually losing a lot of our saltiness and light. We're becoming dim because we're looking like everything else in the world. When a church can look distinctly different from the world, that gives a great opening and opportunity to really show the people that are coming in, hey, this is why we're different. It's about Jesus here. It's not about entertainment or trends or being relevant. It's about Jesus. Okay, I'm getting word that we actually have a sponsor for today's episode, so we're gonna roll that clip now. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Greg, and I'm from Rel Relevant Church. I just want to share with you a little bit about Relevant Church today. Here at Relevant Church, we put the lit into liturgy. When people come to our services, they're surprised at how dope they are. So many of our teens have testified that Jesus used to be fam to them, but now he's bae. Last week's sermon by our youth pastor Fandon definitely passed the vibe check. Yo, last week at our potluck, we had gluten-free, vegetarian, and vegan options for all the people that actually care about the planet. Our senior pastor Daryl just launched a new sermon series called Spilling the Tea About Jesus. Yo, and if you ever get shook, no worries, homie, because we got boomer free zones on each end of the campus. Yo, we look forward to chilling with you this Sunday at Relevant Church. Okay, I don't know if I approve of that ad, but uh, you know what, whatever. Okay, so my point number two is that Christian leaders are being put on pedestals like celebrities. I want to bring some relevant scripture to this issue of putting Christian leaders on pedestals here from 1 Corinthians 3, 4 to 5. For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants, though, from whom you believed, as the Lord assigned to each. So in this passage, it's talking about the fact that people in that day were putting these different leaders. So, uh, you know, Paul or Apollos or you know, Peter putting these Christian leaders on pedestals saying, I follow this person, what this person says, that's gospel to me, and they're my favorite, this kind of thing. When we're doing that, we're actually taking the authority away from the scripture and from God, and we're putting it on another person to guide us to where we need to go. It's like if you were walking down the road with a map, and all of a sudden, you know, you're kind of looking at it, and you're like, okay, this is good, I know where I'm going, I'm, I gotta get to my destinaciones, and I'm just kind of following the little direction, and all of a sudden, oh, hello, we're the wee fellow, I noticed you had a map. I, I would love that map. I, I can take you to the destination. No problem whatsoever. Um, okay. I guess that's okay if you can get me to the destination. I've been down this road many a time. You know what? Just give me the map and it's a wonderful thing. Just follow me and you'll be getting to where you need. When you give that stranger your map and you decide to follow him, what in fact you're doing is you're placing your trust in him. You're not placing your trust in the map anymore because you don't have the map. You gave the map to him and you're trusting in him to make sure he reads the map and gets you to where you need to go. This is kind of an analogy for us putting our trust in specific Christian leaders. And there needs to be a certain level of trust, obviously, just for some people in order to learn and grow and that kind of thing. But like I said before, when you put your total trust in them to guide you where you need to go, when, when you give them, in a sense, your Bible and you expect them to, you know, teach you what it means, you're really taking the authority away from the Bible and giving it to the other person and you're putting your trust totally in them instead of Jesus. 
and so I'm not advocating for some kind of nomadic, oh, everyone just needs a Bible and you don't listen to anybody else and you just only pray and all this kind of thing. No, obviously we need other people in our lives, shepherds, pastors, mentors that can help us. But the difference is, in this case, I'm actually keeping my own map and I'm actually following along somebody else that has a map too. And maybe at points they're like, oh yeah, go this way. This is what the, the map means. And that can be helpful. I'm not giving the map or my Bible to this person, expecting them to tell me where I need to go. By keeping the map in your hand, by keeping the, your Bible in your hand, you're in fact keeping the power to where it belongs with God. Oh my goodness, there's an announcement. Oh, what could it be? I love announcements, announcements for you and me, yeah. Oh my goodness, where did this go? Oh, it's upside down. <laughs> you can get my new book for free. I want to give it to you. You just got to sign up and become a gold or silver gospel partner on Patreon. If you sign up there, I will send you a book as a gift. And um, I'm excited for you to read this book. Uh, I tell a lot of personal stories that I think you'll enjoy. As well as verbalizing a lot of the doubts, struggles, and uh, questions that young men have. And really giving fathers and just parents in general a real um, yeah, understanding of what their child is going through and biblical principles that help guide and really help develop an authentic relationship between parents and kids. So get your free book today. Okay, my third point here is discernment is key. The question to ask ourselves is this, what does it mean to make church about God and not about us? That may seem counterintuitive to some of you. You're like, wait, I thought church was about me. I thought it was about getting me what I wanted and myself fulfilled. No, it's actually to worship of God and we do that through community yeah there's different benefits of that you know we're getting built up we're getting encouraged we're getting we're growing in our faith but ultimately all of that is for God and it's directed at God we trust God we have faith in God we worship God we repent towards God we have a new um, vigor and courage that we're gonna go out and serve God it's all about God so the question that we're asking is how do we make church and how do we approach church with that attitude of making it about God, not about entertainment, not about putting, you know, great communicators on pedestals and pastors because, you know, I really like this guy. This guy's my favorite or I really like their entertainment. It really makes me feel good. Instead, how can we glorify God the most? How can we worship God the best? How can we teach God's word and receive it, you know, humbly and preach it boldly and having good, solid truth, but also preaching in love and receiving and loving on other people? All these questions, it all comes down to, at the end of the day, we're reading God's word, we're discerning what it says to us, and we're continuing to conform our lives and our communities into the image of Christ. The church is Christ's bride, and what God is doing is he's continuing to move the church, his true church, to look more and more like Jesus. The church is made up of individuals. So yes, there's never going to be a perfect church. Churches always are going to be struggling and changing because there's always going to be sin present because there's always going to be people present. But as somebody once said about repentance, this idea of a lifestyle of repentance towards God and worship towards him, it's not about perfection. It's about direction. So as we're seeing this problem of celebrity church culture, we're seeing this, yeah, the entertainment is, yeah, yeah, we're too focused on entertainment. We're too focused on, you know, specific people that are celebrities. Yeah, we, we need to cut that out and focus more about Jesus, his word, worshiping him. This is what it's all about. A verse for you here from Psalm 29 two. Ascribe to the Lord the glory he is due to his name. Worship the Lord in holy array. And Psalm 34, three says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name forever. My encouragement for you is this. Look, you're only one person. You're not, you're watching this video now about the problem with, you know, celebrity church culture. Like, how can I fix anything? What's going on? Well, we started ourselves, you know, we start at our hearts. And so if you've been feeling like you've been swayed towards this, oh man, I really like this kind of person and I've been kind of putting my faith in their teaching only and maybe that I've been putting them on a pedestal or maybe I've been too attracted to just pure entertainment and I've grown bored with God's word. Those are some things that we should go towards God with. Hey God, this is what I'm feeling. This is where my heart is strayed from you. I, I've lost focus 
of you and I really want to focus on you in this. And look, we're all growing. So this isn't just a call out to all these people saying, you're terrible people, you need to, you suck, you suck so bad. No, I, what this, I want this to be, it's just kind of a loving correction just to say, hey, admonition to say, hey, look, this is where we've strayed. Let's go back to where we once were. Let's go back to our first love. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like down below. Please share this video with your friends and family if you think they need to see it because I think this is a message that should get out there. Uh, leave a comment down below with some of your thoughts. Once again, this is not attack on any specific person necessarily. I want you to be discerning. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, you can do that at Daily Disciple Ministry. I post there pretty much every day, so you probably want to check it out. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. See ya!